Hello everyone, welcome back. Now today I'm really excited. We're going to be diving into Project Keswick. Now today we're just going to show you how to manage and deploy applications or change applications that are there. Basically how to manage these work loads at the edge. What I won't be covering is the installation of Project Keswick because at the end of the day it is just installing ESXi, which can be done by USB boot, by ISO, by Pixie boot doesn't really matter. We've all been there. We've all done that. We all know how to do that So I'm not going to cover that. So project Keswick was announced a couple of years back uh, Not this year's explore but last year's explore but this year's explore it was announced under the umbrella of VMware Edge Cloud Orchestrator powered by project Keswick so it's made its way into VMware's Edge family and This year it's also available for everything that I'm about to show today You can actually go and do yourself completely free um, as part of our showcase capability So keswick.showcase.vmware.com uh, You can go in there sign up sign up an org and start you know providing feedback uh, It's really really cool stuff now what is Project Keswick or what is VMware Edge Cloud Orchestrator? So it is essentially a different way to manage ESXi nodes out at the edge. Now ESXi is a very, very small footprint, very, very secure footprint. It can run VMs and it can run containers at the edge. It's almost the ultimate OS for edge devices. Uh, it brings everything that's great about the data center out to the edge, but all into the small form factors. So everything that I'm gonna be demoing today are on Intel Nux. Uh, so just off the shelf Intel Nux, nothing special. Uh, it, Keswick image itself is actually a optimized version of ESXi. That's got a lot of the Keswick bibs and other things built into it, right? So let's get into it. Let's have a look at it um, and let's have some fun. So when we deploy or get started, we go to this launch pad, we can say we can add a we can add a Git repository. So the idea is that you could have one Git repository and you could have a thousand nodes connected to it. So if I was to make any change from an application uh, to adding a VM or adding or removing a VM or removing an application is it will it'll impact all those thousand different nodes, right? Or you could have each single node as its own Git repository so it can manage individually. So this is a comp I really like the way of managing this desired state for not only your ESXi configuration, your Kubernetes configuration, and your apps, container apps, and VMs as well, can all be managed via this Git repository. So a completely new way of managing ESXi um, and the apps and everything, basically all bundled as one, which is really, really cool. Now, um, I'm actually really excited more for this capability coming into the data center. I'll cover that another time. So let's have a look. We've got our Git repository. So we add our Git repositories. So I've got I've got a couple of Git repositories here um, that I apply to the two different nodes. Then once you've got your host and you've booted up, when you actually uh, deploy the Keswick node, it'll actually come up showing you the model and the serial number. So these two combined allows you to be able to connect. Now, this is just in the current state. I obviously can't comment how it's gonna work once it becomes a GA product, but you don't also don't have to use any of this. You can actually completely hold everything within the image that you boot from. So let's just take a quick look at that, right? Before we go into host. So I've actually got my bootable USB drive here that's connected. So let's have a look at our KSCFG here. Um, let's open it with Notepad. Now, once we have this, now this is no different to the normal Kickstarter script that you would get. Uh, you can add everything that you'd normally add, but there's some little bits of differences here. First off, we can see we've got Keswick specific configuration settings that we can make. And if we keep going down, uh, we can also have a look at these bits. So, uh, this is where we would add our Git repository. So essentially using Flux, uh, we give it the Git URL, we give the username, the token, um, the interval. So how often do we want it to check back? So we give all the configuration here. So essentially we can go and boot up, we can connect straight to the Git repository and start doing what it needs to do, right? And we can also further come down uh, and start configuring the CPU and memory and configuration of the worker nodes uh, for the Kubernetes containers. Uh, and then we go further down is we can actually bake in configuration or app deployment within the bootable 
media as well so here we can have you can see there's just a demo obviously none of the these are all um, commented out but we can see that we've got an nginx deployment here and shows you how to use it so no different to any kubernetes definition file that you want to be able to deploy uh, and obviously the service with NSX. so you can come in here and and obviously furthermore you can do the Keswick host configuration. So, you know, any configuration things from NTP to DNS to IPs to all the rest of it, you can set up in here. Now you can keep these all as configuration elements within your Git repository. You don't have to do them here, uh, but this allows you to be able to hand out USB drives or whatever it might be or boot from network and it's already baked into the image that you deploy, right? So that's how you can do it completely offline with no management plane, no nothing, right? So that works. That's actually what I've been demoing for about the last 12 months uh, in offline situations in the field. All right, now let's go back to our things here. So once we once you connect up and you add the host, so essentially you add the Git repository, you would add the host. So you go in and add the host here. So you can import by CSV um, if you've got a lot of hosts. Uh, or you can add host by serial number. So you can add your vendor, your model, and your serial number. So all these will be located on the DCUI screen of ESXi. Now, once you add that in, you will then need to activate the host. So to activate, and I won't step through these, but to activate the host, essentially you assign it a Git repository. So let's go into, and I'll just edit this host here, uh, is we can edit this host at the moment, we can add the Git repository. Now each host needs its own username and access token. So you could share a Git repository with each individual host having its own access, or it could be a combined one. Um, but either way, it allows you to be able to add these uh, to the nodes, right? So you can even change these day two if you want to, uh, if there's been something's been compromised or maybe you just completely changed the structure on how you want to manage your end devices, you can come in through this and actually edit this, edit, edit, edit the URLs, the branches, the usernames and passwords that each node will use uh, and they'll then pick up that node. Obviously, if you're don't you, if you're using completely offline without this currently this SaaS management plane, you would need to redeploy Keswick with a new image or new bootable media that has those new things on it. All right, so let's have a look at the actual host here. So once a host has been deployed, uh, we can see we've got our host details is active. We can see what version it's running. Obviously this is ESXi 8. Uh, what Kubernetes control plane and worker node versions are being used at the moment. Also, the what capacity from storage, memory, and CPU. Uh, any group labels you've given it, obviously the, the hardware information here and networking, as well as the, you know, the GitOps panel, which is showing that status is ready. So now, if we have a look at this particular one, so this is... This one, uh, which is demo zero one. So we have a look at these. Uh, you can see I've got nothing on VMs there, but we've got two. So I'm using Metal LB as a load balancer, and we can see that I've specified uh, IP addresses to be used uh, and dished out as part of that load balancer. Then I've got two different deployments. One's like a Hello World deployment, uh, and the other one is just a uh, a custom little short custom app to be able to change scenarios on the fly right so right now we've got it set to fire so if I have a look it should be 130 so let's go to that one let's copy that one so I don't have to type it out let's go up here let's add this in all right so we've got the current fire activity within Australia so it's you know it gives all it's all interactive that's great now what about if I want to change this so I go into this, Whoop. let's go back to there, let's go into this one, let's go into this map, and let's change the, the version of it, so combat, yep, we go save. So we then do our usual, commit that, and sync those changes. So now hopefully 
uh, it obviously will be checking every minute for a new um, version or update of the Git repository and files within there. Now these files can be in any structure, right? So they can actually be in, you know, in a flat file, they could be separated out by folders. It doesn't really matter how it is. Uh, and obviously you can have different ones. Obviously folders would be nice where you've got, you know, ASXi configuration, you've got Kubernetes configuration, you've got Kubernetes apps and VMs, right? So you can have it nice, nice and um, scattered out. But within a minute, hopefully that should change. So let's just reset. There you go. It's already f finished, right? So there was no editing there. That's done. So this pretty much allows you to update these end points if they've got connection back to your management plane um, or to your Git repository to be able to change these apps, right? Um, so this works. Any Kubernetes based app obviously works uh, and VMs also work. So let's have a look at the VMs now. So what I can do is I've actually made one here from earlier. Um, here it is. I'll just copy that just to show you that there's no smoke and mirrors here. But essentially we can go, I want a new file. Uh, we'll call that photon uh, vm.yaml. Right. And I'm going to add that in there. Now, as you can see, this is using the VMware operator. Um, it's a Kubernetes uh, deployment file, essentially. Uh, you can see I'm using guaranteed small. I'm using a particular Photon OS, so this can be wherever. Uh, and then our configuration map. And I'm actually then running um, uh, data there. Now, this can actually then tie into SaltStack and tie into ARIA, tie into the full VMware ecosystem. But let's just use this now. We'll save that. Obviously, I'll put it under the VMs file. Let's put it added VM and we'll comment that and sync that. All right. Now, if we go back, obviously, it looks every minute. I don't want to go to that one. So VMs. So it's currently got two VMs. Uh, one's off, so that only starts when it needs to. Uh, there's the Keswick worker uh, that's sitting there too. So hopefully, within the next minute, uh, we should actually see a VM start to be deployed. And there it is. Again, no editing. You can see it's importing vapp. Um, it's deploying it at the moment, reconfiguring the VM, uh, and then hopefully powers it on. There it goes. Um, it's powered it on, and off it goes. So it's there. It's a proper VM. Um, it's added everything that it's told it to, two CPUs, full gear RAM, uh, the network that it's connected to. Awesome, all right, there it is, up and running, great stuff. Uh, but furthermore, if I wanted to get rid of that VM, right, this is an example, is it's as simple as going to here, delete that VM, we'll sync that change, clean that, All right, now that's committed. Again, uh, within that middle, that minute interval, uh, that VM should be shut down and removed. And there it goes. So destroyed the VM, it's gone, done and dusted. All right, so very awesome way to be able to manage these deployments. All right, um, and these are, again, it's all just managed by GitOps, so as many apps, as many VMs, however you want to manage these endpoints, uh, as well as the configuration of ESXi and the configuration of Kubernetes as well, any networking, that sort of stuff, can all be managed through your Git repository. Awesome, and this will just be, you know, basically we'll be able to see status, whether it's pulling the images, whether it's uh, waiting or it's failed, something's gone wrong, uh, this gives you a nice view of your uh, edge devices, but a completely different way to manage them. And that's what I'm really excited about is this makes large scale 
edge devices like an Intel NUC or smaller to be able to be managed in a very efficient way, very secure way, as well as manage both containerized application as well as VM based applications, right? So it gives you that flexibility and also being ESXi, you know, allows you to run real time and non real time kernel side by side, etc, etc. So you've got all those years of um, uh, capability from the data center coming out to the edge to give you that flexibility, that security, that manageability um, for your edge devices. All right, so I hope you enjoyed. Uh, next video, I might actually show how you troubleshoot these because uh, it's a little bit different to how you would troubleshoot uh, a normal ES, a, a normal application or a VM on the side. Obviously, having to you know dive behind the scenes on the Kubernetes, there's lots of different log files, and you can see there we can generate a log bundle here and download those log bundles for the individual endpoints as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Stay safe out there. Till next time, see you. Bye.